What's up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 265 of the Smark Out Moments Smack Talk podcast. This is the Hot Tags edition for the week. It's the final Hot Tags of the year, unless I decide at the last minute to do one next week and squeeze it in there, but I highly doubt it. And uh, if you don't know what the Hot Tags are, that's where we break down some of the current events, rumors, and news going on in the world of sports entertainment and pro wrestling from the past couple of days. As always, I am your host, Tony Mango, and joining me on the mic for this episode is Mr. Kalen Ferris. Hey, even though it's really cold outside right now, these tags are hot. Cold as fuck. It's been like 14 degrees here. Oh, man, that's night. warmer than it is here. It's really fucking cold. I think it's five or two or some Ooh. shit like that right now. Yeah. That's not even counting wind chill. That's crazy. <laughs> there was something I was checking out on Reddit the other day, and it said something like, I think it would have been Ohio, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. They said uh, mm -hmm. temperature raised like 20 degrees or whatever, still like, I don't know, like 5, 10 degrees or whatever like that. But uh, hey, at least my car can start now. <laughs> <laughs> Looking on the bright side of things. It's one of the reasons why I don't feel like going out anytime over the next no. couple of days. And I have to, too, so that sucks. It's all like uh, Christmas party atmospheres and like Christmas dinners and everything. And you just go stir crazy being inside the house and all that. But you're like, you step outside for two seconds to let the dog out. And you're just like, nope, fuck it. No, I'm going to wrap myself in a hundred blankets and fall asleep forever. There are very few things that get me out of the house when it's like this. But Star Wars was one of them. But that's oh. a different conversation. Yeah. yeah <laughs> if you guys want to know more about our Star Wars theories uh, and our position on Rogue One or whatever, I put up my review about that a, while, a little while ago. And uh, unfortunately, it's a solo one. But who knows? If you guys bug us enough, maybe we'll record take two or something like that. Solo. Uh, he's not even in the movie. Spoiler alert, he died. <laughs> seven. <laughs> cool movie, though. I did enjoy it. So let's talk about hot tags for the week. Wrestling stuff. Oh, yeah, wrestling. That's right. <laughs> Some stuff has been pretty interesting over the past few days, oddly enough, and thankfully that means that we don't have one of those, like, lunch bag editions where all we're talking about is like, hey, Maurice posted a hot picture, still hot, like that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, let's get into a picture, though, post nonetheless. Let's start right into controversy. There was a post on, I think it was Instagram is where they originally put it up, but who fucking cares? It was Rich Swan, The New Day, and Sasha Banks. And they had hashtag black excellence. And they were talking essentially just about this is the most amount of black champions that has ever happened in WWE. Which is mm -hmm. like, cool. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. Who cares? And a whole bunch of jackasses, of course, took this into the whole like, let's bitch and complain. And oh, why are you making this a race thing? And it's like. Kofi had to put something out and he was just like, it's not a race thing as much as it is an empowerment thing. Like that's never happened before. And why can't we be happy about that? And it's like, goddamn right. Like who fucking has a problem with this? Bunch of racists. <laughs> exactly. If they're not saying that we're better than everybody else, it's like, Hey, yeah. look, look what we're doing. You know, good it, for them. They're black people who have achieved excellence. That's what black yeah. excellence is. It's not black superiority. <laughs> exactly. I have and no even, problem with that. Even if you that know? would have been the case, they're the champions. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like it would have been like, yeah, they were the superior ones in this fake fucking wrestling world. It's not like they're, you know, it's trying to do like a legit storyline here where it's like the nation of dominations turning into a real thing. Well, exactly. If they were a heel faction, I would say they should have gone that way and just play it up even more. Right. Yeah. Then it could have been black superiority, black excellence over. And then they could have listed all the people in the different divisions that they beat and stuff. But they didn't. So it's like these people are getting upset for no reason at all. And it's really people are going to get upset at no matter what you do, especially in wrestling. You've noticed that, so. especially in this environment, too. Now, ever since, I mean, you, you can. Believe what you can believe on either side. I will mention this a little bit in the, the mailbag, but with the the whole election going down, it seems like there's this <laughs> floating cockiness that's kind of happening where people are like, oh, we can be racist now. And it's like, that's nah, still shitty. <laughs> we didn't have an election to allow racism and turn it into a good thing. So some people are taking that in the wrong direction. And of course, no matter what, there's going to be ignorant fucks all over the place. But I couldn't believe when I heard that this was a story that was happening because I would have like ne – well, first off, I don't read Instagram captions. No, I don't follow Instagram at all, so no. 
I, I did I, see them post something on on Facebook though. I saw the picture, I believe, with all the champions there. And I yeah. thought, cool. Yeah, it was like, oh, they took a picture of a bunch of champions. Like that's the first thing that ran through my mind. And then probably- exactly, I didn't even it didn't even tr- you know it didn't even like yeah. occur to me that oh they you know the black excellence that they all happen to be black you know I just thought they were the champions I I don't know if anything my second reaction was probably why is Rich Swan a champion because I don't really yeah, like yeah. <laughs> more than anything yeah I was really hoping he would drop that title the other day yeah well he's gonna drop the Neville he has to I hope so which that was and- a crazy thing too I mean I didn't get your thoughts on this on the the post show but what did you think about the whole Neville situation he's oh, gonna be a heel now like wonderful I can't wait you know I'm I'm Definitely looking forward to that. I think he should take the title, and I think he should hold that title for a long, long time. Months and months. Yeah, I'd like to see him hold that. Like, maybe he gets the championship at, say, I'd be okay with him winning it on 205 Live, but maybe he wins it at the Royal Rumble Mm -hmm. and holds it until, like, SummerSlam. That'd be great. Oh, at least. I would say at least, yeah. There are a lot of people that could hold the championship in the meantime that I wouldn't be, like, upset if that's not the case, but... Him as a heel, I didn't think would be as good. And then he cut that promo on Raw. And I was just kind of like, well, first off, he's an ugly fuck. And second, yeah. <laughs> I kind of bought into it a little bit more. So, you know, a heel Neville, something different. I think that's kind of interesting. But you know what's kind of a shame about this Black Excellence thing? We're talking yeah. about how, like, we want Rich Swan to drop the title. And that's mm-hmm. not, a, of course, it's not a black thing. I mean, we just spent a whole couple minutes talking about how those people that are against that are fucking idiots. But... Very soon after that, we have the New Day drop the titles, and then Sasha Banks drops her title. So it's yeah. like it's a good thing they took that title uh, <laughs> picture while they could, because it's, it's a very small window of opportunity. Yeah. Like four days later or something like that, I think. Jesus right. Christ. So I don't know when the next time that'll end up happening is, but if you have an issue with whatever person of whatever race holding a championship because of their race, then you can kindly fuck off, sir. (laughs) And you're a fucking idiot because it doesn't matter. Now, if you want to complain about the particular people holding them, like you would be fine with uh, anybody of any race or whatever holding the championship, but damn it, shouldn't Cedric be the champion instead of Rich Swan or something like that? Then it's a different story. And then I would agree with you. (laughs) Uh, Let's move to something a little bit. Wait, wait. Uh, now, before we move on to the next topic, this is sort of related. I saw a picture or, or a post or something yesterday, which is sort of related to this. I don't know if you want to bring this up. Did white excellence? Well, no. The Kofi, or not Kofi, I'm sorry, uh, Xavier Woods on Up, Up, Down, Down was doing some kind of stream with players. And somebody had a, a, create, a, a create a wrestler dressed in like a white robe and hood. And I haven't oh, watched the clip Jesus yet. Christ. Dude, but like, I'm like, come on. Like, what the fuck? Did they purposely do that for like Xavier Woods? Like, I'm no, I saw like... Way- Wago had shared something about that. I I need to go back and actually check it out. I don't know if there's actually a video clip of it or or like what. Like a KKK I... guy, not like a ghost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is his uh, finisher uh, time to leave the South Park thing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know what the hell is going on, but uh, actually, thought that there, was interesting. Isn't there a wrestling move called the Burning Cross? Oh God, I don't know. I think that's it. that is. Who does that one? Probably this guy. <laughs> yeah. It sounds familiar. No, wait, Burning Hammer. Okay, that's a little different. Yeah. Burning uh, Hammer. Hammer's Tyler in the shape of a cross. Yeah. Sort of. Jesus. <laughs> Either way, that guy's a fuck up too. <laughs> I'll have to check out the video and see if what uh, his reaction is, because I'm sure his reaction would have to just be like mouth agape and like. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's what I because I, I saw one screenshot of it, and I think that's basically him just with his mouth open, just like, <laughs> what the fuck? Terrible. Just people everybody be decent, okay? Everybody be decent. How about yeah, it's that? It's not that hard, you know? It really isn't that hard. Uh, speaking of decent, <laughs> Scott Hall <laughs> tweeted out a Christmas picture. <laughs> yeah. And in the background on his TV, he's got porn star Brandy Love. And, I did uh, see that picture. I when first uh, I saw about that, people were like, "Wow, you know, that's terrible that he posted a porn picture or like that." And uh, you know, again, like with the Black Excellence thing, you know, one of the first things I would have thought of was, "Why is Rich Swan a champion?" And my first reaction for this was, "Wait, who is that?" And then I had to look it up, and it was Brandy Love, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I like Brandy Love. She's hot." <laughs> I can't even imagine who that is. I I don't know the name, Could but I did. Star. Scott Hall. Yeah, well, yeah, I know it's a porn star, but. I'm not familiar with that particular person. I do know Scott Hall, though. I, at first, 
people are like, oh, he didn't even realize that was on in the background. No, that was obviously intentional. Oh, yeah. He has it perfectly framed to be able yeah. to let you see that. And it's it's Scott Hall we're talking about. He exactly. probably was giddy like a fucking schoolgirl laughing about taking this picture. Just like, you know, tweets uh, Kevin Nash and he's like, yo, Kev, <laughs> take a look and at actually, this. The first time I did see the picture, I thought somebody had photoshopped that onto the television screen. <laughs> and then I'm, reading, I'm like, oh, no, OK, that's actually how it was taken. OK. That's just a funny thing that, you know, we throw out the important stories for the hot tags, but sometimes it's just like, hey, Scott Hall tweeted out a porn picture. Why not? You know, so mm-hmm. if you are not familiar with Brandy Love, go ahead and check her out. She's pretty hot. And if you are familiar with Scott Hall's tweets, then that's something to actually pay attention to maybe. I don't know. I don't really check Twitter all that much, but if he's going to be posting weird shit like this, I might have to start getting into that. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have an injury to talk about. Zack Ryder was injured on SmackDown. Uh, we were is it really this... that unfortunate, though? Oh, it is. I like Zack Ryder. I know. I do, too. I'm just giving him shit. We're, if you're listening to this later on in the week, we're recording this Tuesday afternoon, so SmackDown has not yet happened, so I don't know how they're going to address this, but the situation was that the Hype Bros won a tag team title match, mm-hmm. and that does not seem to be happening anytime soon because he has undergone uh, surgery. Uh, I don't know that what sucks. the timetable is for him to return, but I would assume it's at least going to be more than you know a handful of weeks. I'm sorry, you said it's a shoulder injury? or No, his leg. Or... Leg? I don't remember if it's a leg or a knee. Might be his okay. knee. Damn, but some sucks. kind of leg related thing. And mm-hmm. um yeah, he said that he missed Rogue One, which that sucks too. And that he's gonna be out for a little bit. And the most interesting thing that came up about this to me, other than the fact that we don't know how the tag title situation is gonna turn out, mm-hmm. was they started kind of tweeting the idea of what about Kurt Hawkins teaming up with Mojo Rawley in the in his steed. Or in his okay. stead. Not his steed. Yeah. Steed. <laughs> in his horse. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. You know, that that might be decent. I mean, Kurt Let's Hawkins see. isn't doing anything else. Right. And Mojo yeah. Raleigh is not going to get some kind of huge singles no, push out of this. Absolutely not. Yeah, see, that makes sense. I would be kind of interested in it just if they kept the idea that, like, Hawkins was saying, oh, the reason why you were hurting your legs is because you were carrying Mojo. Hmm. Like, what if they did a transition where... Zack Ryder cuts a promo, like, you know, if they can have him fly him out and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he goes, hey, you know, I got injured during this match, but we still did earn a title match. Right. Kurt Hawkins, my former fake brother, take my place. And he goes, like, I don't want to fucking team with Mojo. And you sort of do, like, a Cesaro-Sheamus thing a little bit. Okay. The odd couple. They just gave Cesaro and Sheamus the titles, so you don't want to cross over too much. Sure. But what if they did that kind of a thing where he's like, he just does not really want to be a part of that. And maybe they start getting together and maybe that leads to some kind of major brothers and hype bros sort of, I don't know, a free bird hybrid thing going on. That could be interesting. Do you know how long Ryder's supposed to be out? Not too sure. Uh, I would assume at least a couple of months. Mm, damn. I would not be surprised if he missed WrestleMania. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. But he probably would have just been in the... Andre the Giant Battle Royal anyway. Right. So. Yeah. No, and as much as we like to poke fun at Zack Ryder, it sucks when anybody gets injured, so I wish him the best. Yeah. Now, how would you like the tag title situation to play out tonight? Because the Wyatt family needs new contenders, and they've been kind of teasing the whole split between Slater and Rhino, so they can't really step in. Uh, I'm still waiting on American Alpha to hold those titles. My theory behind that was that they didn't, push American Alpha yet because they want them to be the ones that take the belts and they want to give the Wyatt family at least a little bit of a run. Yeah, I guess so. They have to feed somebody to them in the meantime. Let's see, who would it be though? Out of the teams that they have readily, uh, readily, I'm botching all over the place tonight. Uh, even tonight, I said tonight and it's in the afternoon. Jesus <laughs> Christ. That's what happens when you don't get much sleep. Uh, if they are going to go with somebody that's just readily available, mm-hmm. I'd be up for Brizongo. Yeah, I could see that. Just like, you're not going to feed them to him anyway. So you so don't need to. Bri- Brizongo would play the babyface role there? Yeah, like have them come out and they start doing that whole thing where they're giving out the uh, the tickets for like the fashion police thing and be like, you know, your beard's terrible. Randy Orton, your tattoos are crap. Like that kind of a thing. Okay. That'd be kind yeah, of I could see that. Yeah. It's certainly not going to be the Vaude villains. They've been botching. God. I mean, not they, botching. Yeah. Man, man, botching all over. They've been uh, treating Simon Gotch like he's utter trash. Mm hmm. He got eliminated in that Royal Rumble or that Battle Royal in what, like four seconds flat? 
Poor guy, man. He did not do something bad enough to get punished for like eight months straight. Well, if he's in a match, you know he's the one probably taking the pin. Mm-hmm. In any scenario, too. Like, yeah, exactly. The Ascension has been better booked than the Vaude Villains. That's that's really weird, considering how good they were on NXT. And how good they there. still could be. Like they're a fun, oh, yeah. entertaining group. And I mean, we've had Enzo and Cass, we've had the New Day, we have uh nobody's really too into the hype bros, but they're kind of like a little bit goofy. You know, we did run an era where there's a lot of like comedic tag teams. Vaude villains could be really funny. I mean, same thing with the Ascension though. Both uh Vaude villains and the Ascension we're doing good stuff on NXT, and as soon as they're on the main roster, it's they're kind of booked as a joke. And Apollo Crews hasn't been doing crap, and yeah, yeah, we all thought wonder... Apollo Crews would have a huge year, but look how it is now. Tyler Breeze didn't really get a fair shake. Mm-hmm. Kind of makes you wonder why they bring them up if they don't want to do anything with them. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. Maybe they have a big plan, but I'm guessing they're just making it up as they go along. Now, if that happens to Samoa Joe. Bobby Roode, oh, Shinsuke Nakamura, yeah. I'm going to be pissed. But I highly doubt it. Those are, like, priority people. Although there I... is rumors that Ty Dillinger might be coming up soon, and I could see him getting lost in the shuffle. Although I hope not, because I like Ty Dillinger. Well, one person that they definitely did get right was Kevin Owens. Yeah. He might be one of the only ones. Sami Zayn took a little bit of a while before he got back on track. Mm-hmm. And again, that was part of the injury, too. So, And I'd, st- I'd say that he's still not totally on track to where he should be. Uh, well, he's arguing with McFoley and getting his ass whooped <laughs> by Braun Strowman. I think that's about right. Yeah, I'm so happy to see him just get his ass whooped. I like Sammy oh, yeah. Zayn, but he's such a <laughs> dork. Like, I want that guy to be the Intercontinental Champion, though. They need to give him that belt. He's good, but he's not as good as El Generico. Yeah, he's too much better. What was Braun Strowman's name before Braun Strowman? Um, I don't know. I know he was a rosebud. I know that they spelled Strowman differently. Hmm. He was a rosebud. Yeah. Which one was he? Like the. the he was the, the hamburger. Big, oh, no, <laughs> and I've seen pictures. <laughs> Braun Strowman like one. Yeah, it was Braun Strowman and Simon Gotch and Becky Lynch, and they were all. At the very least, we know he wasn't the B. No. That was a uh, Thea Trinidad. Oh yeah. But she better be a part of that women's championship uh, tournament thing that they're doing, or not championship tournament, but she better be involved in that. Uh, speaking of the tournament, though, actually, that's a good little transition. Hey, hey good job, hey. Subconscious Tony. They announced a new title that's going to be happening January 2017. It's going to be the WWE United Kingdom Championship Tournament. And I know not a single person here, but I'm going to read them off uh, very quickly. We have Trent Seven, Pete Dunn, Tyler Bate, Wolfgang, Tyson T-Bone, <laughs> such a dumb name, Tucker, <laughs> Jordan Devlin, Roy Johnson, Joseph Connors, H.C. Dyer, Jack Stars, Sam Gradwell, James Drake, Dan Maloney, Chris Tyler, Saxon Huxley, Ringo Ryan, and Tiger Ali. Not Tiger Ali Singh, just Tiger yeah, Ali. Different, different Took me a second when I first read that. I was like, Tiger Ali Singh? What the fuck? And I was like, That's oh, what okay. I thought. I thought he was going to be like the uh, Tajiri or something, you know? So not a single one of these is somebody who's been in the company before, as far as mm-hmm. I'm aware. They're all people that I'm not aware of, like their history, their backstory, and their skill levels and stuff. I don't even think I've heard any of their names before, except for Trent Seven, maybe. And I couldn't even pick him out of the crowd. Do you know any of these people? I do not, but just looking at the list of names, I like Saxon Huxley, because each of his names has an X in the middle. That makes He's him extra extreme. cool. Yeah. <laughs> his... uh. AIM's screen name probably had a bunch of underscores and XOs. And <laughs> <laughs> I would go as far as names. I mean, I'm certainly not going to be like, man, I'm going to root for Tucker. Yeah. <laughs> like, who the fuck is that? But I like the name Ringo Ryan. It sounds kind of stupid. Mm-hmm. And the one that sounds the most like a guy that I could actually buy into being a champion would probably be Tyler Bate. Because mm-hmm. it sounds like it's like an indie type of thing, and they seem like they're going for an indie feel for this. This is that all going to be Tyler Black. <laughs> Tyler Bate was so much better when he was Tyler Bateman, <laughs> and he's Derek's brother. <laughs> uh, they're going for a full indie thing here. They're going to try to 
transition this into some kind of a weekly show, which at that point, fuck you. You've got three hours of Raw, a Raw pre-show, whatever happens after Raw, two hours of SmackDown, a SmackDown pre-show, Talking Smack, 205 Live, NXT. If you watch Total Divas and that kind of crap, you have that too. Then you have four-hour pay-per-views, sometimes five-hour pay-per-views. And then you want to do a UK show? Uh Uh-uh. I ain't watching that. Well, at least nobody can complain that they're not giving us our $9.99 worth. That's true. $9.99. So, you know, at the very least, yeah, if they want to do that kind of stuff, cool. If you are into the indie scene and you're into the UK scene, then that's going to be amazing for you. But that's 16 guys that I'm not aware of, and maybe they're all going to be awesome. Maybe they're all going to be shit. I don't know. Kind of weird, though, that right after we bring in somebody like a Jack Gallagher, then they have... a totally separate United Kingdom title and all that. And Mm -hmm. I got to imagine somebody like a Wade Barrett's probably like, fuck, (laughs) you know, you know, with this, you can't help but compare it to the cruiserweight thing that they did recently. And I thought they did a really good job with that. So if this is on par with that, I think we got some really good television ahead of us. Now, when we were just mentioning a few minutes ago that they are going to be doing this women's championship, they were saying that that Mm could have been in January. Clearly that's not going to be the case. Right. Unless they want to really keep this tournament thing going for the whole lull between WrestleMania. And maybe February, March is when they're going to do that. I don't know. But this is going to be a two-day tournament, I think, that they said. Yep, the 14th and the 15th of next month, Saturday, Sunday. So that's something that's a lot different from the Cruiserweight Classic. Cruiserweight Classic went on for like nine weeks or something, I think. It was right. quite a while. This is going to be just a two-day thing. That's half as many people. They're going to knock that out real quick. So they could, in theory, do the same type of thing for the women, or they could do a cruiserweight thing. I'd rather have like the cruiserweight classic instead. But they feel, I don't know, it feels to me at least that they're rushing this a little bit. Do you feel like? Yeah, I think you? so. Yes, in the course of two days, because each one it's a sixteen man, so they're gonna each wrestle. What is it? Four times, right? So uh, eight, yeah. four, two, one, yeah. So I think might be pushing it. I would at least stretch it to another day. Because you're going to have people wrestling, you know, two or three times a day. And at that point, I don't know, not only are they going to get possibly burnt out, but the crowd isn't going to be as hyped after a while. They don't get hyped. Now, for as far as I know, (laughs) I don't know if this is going to be live. I don't remember if I came across that information. So maybe they're going to record this ahead of time and they won't have people actually wrestling multiple times a night. That's true. Yeah, I I could imagine that they're probably not because of the time difference, too. Hopefully, because the UK time difference is going to throw everybody off. But then again, it's the WWE Network, so you can just stream it whenever. Yep. So they might do that. If they're catering I... more towards the UK market, they might not care. Mm-hmm. Although I don't mind if they actually do it live, like the Beast in the East that they did last year. I thought that was cool. I was up at 5 a.m. to watch it. 5 a.m. is when it was? Something like that. It was fucking early. Hmm. Do so you have any ideas of what they should call this new TV show that they're going to create out of this? Because we have 205 Live, which I never would have thought would have been the name. No. Gosh, I have no idea. I'm sure. If Leave your joke answers in the comments below. <laughs> it's like Spot of Tea or something like that. Like <laughs> We need Wego on this to throw some kind of uh, Bell End jokes. There you go, Bell End. <laughs> I was just like, ring the bell. Exactly, because you know, you know. that ends the matches. There we go. The, <laughs> the bell end tournament. <laughs> and then when they start getting a bunch of hate mail, they're going to be like, I don't understand. What the fuck? This means nothing in America. And America's the only one that matters. <laughs> uh, American mentalities. So uh, transitioning from that to another thing I mentioned before about that they might be doing this whole women's championship thing. Oh, actually, no, there's one more thing we need to talk about with the UK title thing is that they're bringing Nigel McGuinness into this. Ah, uh, yes. So it's cool that he's going to be actually a part of the company now, although a couple of years ago when they were looking at him and Daniel Bryan and everybody was, you know, blowing a load over those two, it ended up being that they couldn't bring him on board because of all of his health issues, and then Daniel Bryan gets on board and then they end up firing him and coming back and all that other kind of crap. So Daniel Bryan's had a roller coaster career, and Nigel McGuinness never even got a chance to start his, but they're bringing him in now. So clearly they've been interested in him for the past couple of years, even though he's been gone. And I think that's kind of interesting. I'm not the biggest, biggest fan of him because I don't know his work too well, but it's kind of cool just to, you know, pop people a little bit. Yeah, cool. Looking forward to it. 
he's what color commentator or something? I think so. Yeah, because uh, Regal's doing something in some kind of like a uh, overseer role. Michael Cole was a part of the press conference, but I didn't watch the press conference, so I don't know if he's got anything to do with like a producer capacity or something. But he's probably just there to be like, you know, hey everybody, I'm Michael Cole. I'm that guy. You know me. By the way, here are the people I'm going to introduce. Probably that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested to see what they do with Nigel McGuinness going forward. But one thing that's kind of interesting to me when it comes to these signees that they've been doing lately, it seems like they've known that they want to bring these guys in all along. And maybe the more that Triple H gets power, the more he's just going, let's just fucking do it. Because look at what they've been doing. Bobby Roode, Samoa Joe, Austin Aries, AJ Styles, The Club. There's rumors that they want to bring in Kenny Omega and uh, the Young Bucks, Nigel McGuinness, a whole set of cruiserweights, a whole set of United Kingdom people. They're gearing up for a whole set of new women. It seems like they really are paying attention to that that indie scene. Well, especially now with the brand split, they have to bring in lots of extra talent. Yeah. So that's good. That's something that we were worried about with the whole draft to brand split thing. And they seem like right. they're trying to at least get that that ball rolling. It's going to take a while. You know, it's at least midway through 2017 before they get into like a full swing. Because we don't even know what the pay-per-view schedule is going to be and stuff. But right. I could see this... United Kingdom thing is going to be like a one tournament thing, I think. That's going to establish a champion. Then they're going to make their TV show and then kind of do like what 205 Live did. I don't think we're going to get another Cruiserweight Classic. Unless maybe the Cruiserweight Classic is going to be something that they just do on 205 Live. I could see that being the case. Kind of like the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic is only on NXT. They don't do like a separate show. That would make sense. If they do that, I don't think we're going to get a women's show separate too. So whatever this women's tournament is, I think that could be kind of their once a year thing. Although I don't know. I mean, would you rather see a women's show separate like that? I think they could do it. I think they have enough talent out there. And I think people would be interested at least for the first few months to give them a chance. They're running out of colors though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> the United Kingdom one, I don't know what they're going to use for that. Maybe like, I mean, they'd probably just use the red, white, and blue. Maybe a little gold. They only have green left. It's like the only one. Hmm. Should have used purple for the women instead of the two or five live things. Hmm. Either way, uh, that's tying into something. I long, long transition when it came to that. Uh, If they're going to be doing this whole women's championship tournament or women's tournament, if it's not for a championship or whatever, if they do that at the beginning of the year, like what the previous rumor was, I was mentioning that it might be something based off of that lull in March. Well, we know one thing that's probably going to be going in there. They've already said, you know, there's no indication that they're going to be doing the Slammy Awards in the next week or so. And they mentioned earlier in the year that they were thinking about moving that to the generic awards season where like the... Golden Globes, the Oscars, the Emmys, they're all in mm-hmm. like the beginning of the year. Would you rather see Slammy Awards go to WrestleMania week or would you rather do what I would rather do? We have those weeks in March where we don't have a pay-per-view to throw it into there. Yeah, I think that would make more sense to do it in the couple of weeks right before then. I wouldn't want to do it WrestleMania week because there's already enough going on. Yeah, you got the Hall of Fame, WrestleMania Access, NXT TakeOver, and WrestleMania, and then the mm-hmm. night after WrestleMania, which that's usually the hottest Raw of the year. I think that's a little overkill if you throw the Slammys in there. It's going to get lost in the shuffle. I agree. Yeah, do it Do it like two or three weeks before then. I think that would be the best part. We got um, Fastlane is March 5th, I think. Okay. So it's like a three-week period or so before we get into WrestleMania. Do it like the week after Fastlane. I think that'd be a good time. There's no indication yet of exactly when they're going to do that. They might not even just not do the Slammy Awards. I don't know, but kind of shitty. I had a whole bunch of graphics and stuff all sorted out for the Slammy Awards at the end of this year, and I had to push them away for a couple of months. God damn it, WWE. That's what I get for planning ahead. And our last hot tag of the week, 
no transition for this one whatsoever that I can think of. Brock Lesnar has been suspended for one year, and he's been fined $250,000 for those two drug tests that he failed at UFC 200. So he is not going to be competing at any time soon. Seems like that's going to burn some bridges. And he's having a shit year, isn't he? I mean, he won that match at UFC uh, 200. Mm -hmm. But this dude had a shitty match with Randy Orton. Right. And then he got his ass whooped by Goldberg, loses 250 grand, gets suspended for a year. So we can't even like go just do a different thing in UFC. What did he do at WrestleMania this year? Is that this year? Ambrose? Gosh. Uh, no, he already did Ambrose. Well, yeah, this past year, you mean? Yes. Yeah. 2016 WrestleMania. That was, I Ambrose, thought you were right? looking forward to next year. Yeah. That was Dean Ambrose. Yeah, next year is going to be Goldberg. Yeah. So what do you think about him being fined and uh, suspended? Uh, well, I mean, if you break the rules, you got to pay the price, I guess. You know, he knew what it was going into it. So I guess you reap what you sow. Don't do the uh, crime if you can't do the time. Yeah. Sucks to be you, nerd. I'm just going <laughs> to <whoop> my ass. <laughs> I am actually kind of happy that they went uh, along with this. If he did fail the test, like you said, if this is the type of thing where a lot of like celebrities can get away with different things. And you right. know what? Who cares if it's Brock Lesnar? If you got caught failing a drug test, you should be punished just the same as everybody else. Just the same as when like Roman Reigns got uh, popped. You know what? Just because you're the champion doesn't mean that you're exempt. And I would hope that everybody would kind of keep to the the same regard like that. Like if John Cena got caught under a wellness policy uh, policy thing, that they would give him that suspension. If uh, any football player got involved in something, same kind of thing. So good to see that they're not going to just buckle under and sweep it under the rug just because it's Brock Lesnar. That exactly. There are some people who are kind of larger than life as far as the company goes. And that doesn't still mean that they're above the rules, though. So I'm glad that they're enforcing that. I'd love to hear a Heyman promo cut about this, though. <laughs> Just bitching and complaining about it. I did like the one dig when he was in a program with Orton about the no enhancements needed. Yeah. That was, that was, was kind of a nice little dig, yeah. All right, guys. Well, those are the hot tags for the week. As we mentioned before, leave your comments below. Tell us what you think about all these different topics. The Zack Ryder injury, how would you like to see that pan out? We might know as much as a couple hours from now when SmackDown airs, but maybe they do something that you don't like. Whatever the case may be, drop your comments for that. What do you think about the bra bla Brack? The black excellence <laughs> photo? Is that something that people should have been upset about? If it is, try to argue it. I don't know how you can, but... Uh, what do you think about their new champions that replace them? Should the Slammy Awards be WrestleMania week? Who are you picking for the United Kingdom Championship out of that 16 field uh, of competitors? Brock Lesnar suspended situation. And uh, what's your favorite Brandy Love scene? <laughs> oh, and the, uh, the names for the shows, too. What would a women's show be and what would a UK TV show be? So drop those comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Hit us with that thumbs up button on YouTube as well. Keep paying attention to the channel for the IWC outreach, which will be coming up whenever it's coming up. I'm not too sure. I already recorded it, so that's out in the bag. And our mailbag is going to be coming up this week too with the holidays. It's really kind of crazy, so I'm not sure when we're going to be recording that. Maybe Wednesday, depending on if anybody's available. And uh, if I don't see you guys uh, for any of those kind of holiday things, have a happy holiday. Everybody be safe, be merry, all the other things that go along with that. Eat some food, buy some gifts, whatever. We will see you next time, everybody. Thanks for watching. This has been another Smart Out Moment, and we're being counted out.